Today's passage is Lamentations chapter 2. The book of Lamentations is written by an unknown author. Though many early Christian and Hebrew scholars point to the similarities of theme and time frame even as evidence that it may have actually been written by Jeremiah. The entire book is poetic. The first, second, fourth, and fifth laments all contain 22 verses. This reflects the number of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Nevertheless, we cannot really be certain who authored these carefully crafted poems or who is responsible for putting them together into a single scroll. Lamentations expresses the people's overwhelming sense of loss that has accompanied the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, as well as the exile of Judah's inhabitants from the land that Yahweh had covenanted to give to Israel as a perpetual national homeland. Although it is not the only Old Testament book to contain laments, this style of writing is integrally woven into the fabric of a poetic wrestling with the ways of God, who's dealing with his wayward people. The author of these laments seems to understand clearly that the Babylonians were merely the human agents of God's divine judgment. In fact, it was God who allowed the destruction of the city and the destruction of the temple. It was not merely an arbitrary act on the Lord's part. Blatant God-defying sin and covenant-breaking rebellion were actually at the root of all of his people's woes. Chapter 2 is full of descriptive language of the aftermath of God's anger against his people. The Lord is like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces and destroyed her strongholds. He has multiplied mourning and lamentation for daughter Judah. He continues on in verse 7 to say, The Lord has rejected his altar and abandoned his sanctuary. He has given the walls of her palaces into the hands of the enemy. The writer would actually go on to further lament Jerusalem's fate in verse 9, saying, Her gates have sunk into the ground. Their bars he has broken and destroyed. Her king and her princes are exiled among the nations. The law is no more and her prophets no longer find visions from the Lord. See, the cries of God's people are understandable here, but the proper response to God's righteous judgment should have been acknowledgement of their sin and genuine contrition. The writer seems to have known that this fate would befall Israel. In fact, just a few verses later in verse 17, it reads, the Lord has done what he planned. He has fulfilled his word, which he decreed long ago. It'll be several chapters into this short book before the tone of the Israelites shifts away from lament and toward reverence for God and pleas for his restoration. God has never wavered in fulfilling his promises. He has demonstrated his judgment of his disobedient people when they openly choose to stray away from him. But God always had a plan for his people and he always gives us a choice. God knows what's best for us and ultimately desires our obedience and our reverence.